Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kids TV. In the house like kitchen sinks. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Uh, definitely share. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, guess what? You're amongst one of the first to receive it. No further ado, let's get into uh, this evening's video, if you will. Watching Fleece Johnson. Infamous Fleece Johnson. If you're not familiar with uh, Fleece Johnson, go check him out. Hustler Spirit 502. They're out of Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, it's a very informative, uh, to say the least, channel. Fleece Johnson, Hustler Spirit 502. Um, basically, it's a channel um, in which Fleece Johnson, you know, he's he's telling about his 40 years that he did in prison. All of the experiences that he uh, experienced, he shares with us. And the gentleman interviewing him is Big Lee. Um, he asked some very... Uh, great in my opinion questions gets a little graphic at times but hey the truth is the truth and fleece experienced a lot of these things well all of these things in my opinion that he speaks of i was a little apprehensive i was a little you know in the beginning but as time went on and 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 i spoke to different people because we are in the same state i come to realize that a lot of his stories are you know pretty much happened the way that he said that they happened. This particular story that I watched um, a couple days ago, and Fleece is a very, very funny guy. I mean, I was laughing. There are times to where I'm watching his uh, video, watching him being uh, interviewed once again by Big Lee, and I'm laughing so hard that I literally literally have to pull over on the side of the road because yeah why it does get a little graphic and distasteful at times for some i would imagine he, he he's funny his the you know the way that he comes across in his delivery but at the end of the day you have to keep in mind that there is a message and the message is that he's trying to get across to these kids stay out of prison be out here with your family because when you uh, subject yourself to that uh, sort of environment, these are the things that goes on. 40 years in prison, 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, you know, he 40 years in prison. So that's the message that he's, you know, trying to get across to a lot of these youngsters out here that's just out here running wild like 25 to life never crossed their mind. You know, but he said something that was, uh, I guess it could be a topic of uh, conversation, discussion. You know, I put it on my, uh, as my short, as one of my short videos, my short story. And basically, Flea said that all women should require they mans, that's what he said, they mans, not they men or they man, <laughs> they mans. <laughs> you know, Fleece has a way of, of, you know, he's fleece. All women should require their mans to take a uh, physical exam slash STD test once being released from prison. I put that up, as I mentioned on my story, and a lot of people chimed in. And you had some people that were saying, absolutely. I have no problem with that. And you had some people that were like, well, no, I would be offended if my wife or my girl asked me to do that. It's all about trust. So it was kind of, you know, it, it was it was the. It was both ways. It was like a seesaw. Some would say this, some would say that. Me personally. I never indulged. And that sort of uh, behavior when I was in prison. But the thing about it is this. This is the thing that, that Fleece talked about 
and I don't necessarily agree with what he said. I agree with some part of what he said, but Fleece stated that if a man has 15 years in prison in which he has to serve, because in Kentucky, you might get a 15 year sentence, but as long as it's not anything violent or sexual or anything of that uh, magnitude, you do 20% of your, of your time and then you go up to see the parole board, which would mean you would do three years. You'd have a chance to get out. If they didn't let you out after three years, they may say, okay, take this class, go do this, go do that, you know, fulfill these uh, requirements and come back and see us in 18 months, 15 months, maybe even a year. The point that I'm making is a 15 year sentence or better in which you have to serve straight, Fleece Johnson feels as though all men, he didn't say all, but essentially he was saying all. He was like, you might have 10 men out of like a million. It was something like that, astronomical. I don't know where he got his data, his data from. I don't know, you know, where he's getting uh, uh, this information. And I say all of these things respectfully, man. I fool with, you know, I fool with uh, uh, Hustler Spirit 502, Big Lee, Fleece Johnson, you know what I'm saying, on, you know, the, the, the YouTube tip. As I mentioned, you know, they're both, we're both from Kentucky. Well, we're all from Kentucky, rather. But I can't necessarily say that I agree with those, uh, you know, analytics, if you will, <laughs> that Fleece, you know, stated. But I understand the message. Because I've, I've walked those yards. I've been in prison. I've been in camps. I've been in jail. And there's a distinct difference between a camp and a prison. But it's all locked up. At the end of the day, you can't go home. You can't go home. You know, and I've seen individuals that I never knew. Seemingly indulging in that sort of uh activity you know i never walked in on anyone and and seen them you know in the act but when you see people and 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 they're consistently around each other and they're consistently you know looking at each other a certain type of way even though i mind my business don't get me wrong what you do is what you do you know in prison i see no evil i hear no evil but you see it. Even though you, you, you know, your mentality is, is to mind your business, you see when this dude that you knew on the streets, you see this individual walking with this other individual that does indulge. Talking. Now, they could be talking business. Don't get me wrong. But when you see it just on a regular basis, come on now. You start to put, you know, one plus one together. So you you definitely see it and it happens more often than not. But again, I don't agree with the out of a million people, maybe 10 wouldn't do it. No, I, I don't. I don't see a scenario in which. Oh. Um, and this speaks for a lot of people. You got to go do 30 years, 40 years, the rest of your life. That doesn't mean that you're going to lay down with the same sex. You see what I'm saying? And, and getting an all out relationship with someone of the same uh, uh, sex. I just don't. I, I, I can't agree with that. Fleece decided to do what he did. Because he decided to do what he did. But that doesn't mean that everyone has Fleece Johnson's uh, mentality. Now, Fleece also stated that the last, I want to say, uh, and don't quote me on the exact numbers, but the last 18 to 20 years, he no longer indulged in that sort of activity because he realized that it was just something that he no longer wanted to uh, to do at that point. But um, I thought that it was very interesting. So what, what I did was I said, okay, 
because that's fair. Now, I can see how a guy would feel like, now, hold on, what are you saying? You know, what what are you insinuating? You want me to get a, a STD test? What, you think I was in there, you know, uh, doing this sort of activity? I can see how some people may be offended about that. But in all fairness, if you're a lady, if you're fortunate enough to have a... a, a woman significant other wife and she waits on you and she wants you to she wants to be sure that you know everything is is, is straight with you as far as uh physically and and you know she wants to make sure that she's good before she lays down with you no problem so this is what we're gonna do boo this is what we're going to do, boo. I have no problem doing this whatsoever. However, let's both of us go down and take the test. I take a test, you take a test. You take a test, I take a test. <laughs> that way, we both can be sure about each other. And it doesn't have to be any sort of uh, uh, discrepancies. It doesn't have to be any... Hmm, I wonder what this person was doing now... Just because you pass the test or come up negative on the test, I said that as though like you're in school. Yeah, yeah, I passed. You know, well, essentially, I guess it is a form of passing if you don't come up negative. But nevertheless, if if the both of you all take the test and you come up negative, you come up positive, at least somebody knows. At least you know, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. And, you know, guys sometimes will make up, you know, I I, I know a dude, man, that caught a, what did he catch? It was one of those uh, sexually transmitted diseases. And he was like, no, nah, baby, it wasn't even like that. I think what it was is is when I sit on the toilet, when I was sitting down on the toilet in, in jail, I must have caught it. I can't remember the name of the, uh, <laughs> of the disease. <laughs> but, you know, a pair of lips will can and will say anything so you know he sat on the toilet and man i guess he caught a uh, std in jail i don't know i don't know and i don't want to know it's not my business i don't judge anybody who am i to judge somebody you want to be in jail getting your freak on to get your freak on to get your freak if it's if that's what you choose to do But I do feel like that it's unfair for guys to come out. And I'm only speaking, let me stress this. I'm only speaking on the guys that are in there indulging. It's only fair for women out here to at least know your status. Because when you come out, and let's just say you have a disease and you get with this girl and then, you know, you coming out because you've been working out for five, six years straight, doing a thousand crunches a day. You're doing your push-ups, you're reading your Bible, you got your mind right, your spirit's right. And oftentimes all that goes out the window when you get out. So when you first come home, you know, you're talking right, you're being sweet, you're being, you know, Baby, I miss you so much. You bringing her flowers. You doing all the things that women love. The attention. The attention. And it's easy to overlook, overlook the things that really, really, yeah, those things matter. But the things that need to be handled first. Listen, baby, we, we got to, you know, we got to go handle this business. What were you saying? You saying I was in there? Listen, I just... I just got to be sure if you can't do that for me, for us, for our relationship, then we can, no, you know, we can't proceed with this relationship. It definitely goes down in there. I'm going to tell you, Fleece was not lying. He told you firsthand. It definitely goes down. But, um, I just don't agree with the, uh, Again, the analytics, the amount of people that he's saying 
will and would indulge. No amount of time make you like another uh, dude if you're not into dudes. You see what I'm saying? I, I mean, I wouldn't imagine that. And I only say that because I can't speak for, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for uh, everyone else and their mentality and, and, you know, how they would ultimately go about doing things. I can only speak for real kids. And I just thought that that was a very, very interesting video. You know, I had a celly one time. And for you all that, you know, haven't been to prison, he was my cellmate. Pause, pause, though, because I didn't want to make it like he was my mate. He was, we uh, shared a cell. Because <laughs> they didn't have single cells. So we was in, you know, the cell together. He had a life sentence. A life sentence plus 20, but the 20 years was ran concurrent with the life sentence. So basically it just means he had a life sentence. But he had a life sentence in which he could go for parole and potentially uh, get out. And he asked me, and I've stated this before in an earlier video, um, a prior video. He said, yo, homie. I'm like, what's up, man? He said, oh, when's the next time you going to call home? I said, well, matter of fact, I'm calling home late on. Because I was probably, we was a good four and a half, five hours away from my hometown. Like, we literally grew up in the same, we knew, we was maybe two years apart in age. And we knew every, all the same people. I grew up right around the corner from where he grew up. So, you know, we would we would talk sometimes. Sometimes, man, we sit in the cell and, and not say nothing. It's just what it was. You know, at the time, the uh, George Zimmerman uh, case was going on. So I want to say this was 2012, 13, somewhere right around in there. And that's all he would really want to do is just watch TV all day long and watch the trial of George Zimmerman. That particular time, I was just arriving there. I didn't have a television or anything yet. So I'd just be in the cell like, man, reading or just whatever. But at any rate, I said, yeah, man, I'm going to call home, you know, uh, late on. What's up? He was like, man, could you have your people send my people a message? Yeah, no problem, man. I do that. Now, mind you, it's the same person that ain't never offer me anything because when you first get to prison man it might be tight on you or you might not come you know you might not have your money yet or you might not so he was sitting there and just you know eat big chicken now when i say big chicken in prison man the big thing is uh banquet chicken at least back then it was the banquet chicken charge you about eight dollars for it you get five maybe six seven pieces uh, in the box if you're lucky and, you know, fry you some potatoes up in the microwave and, you know, you eating good. So the cell smelling good, smelling good, rather. You come in there, you know, you don't really have a whole lot. It's like, man, now no one is is. Uh, you know, no one has to offer you anything. No one is entitled to, you know, you, no one has to be like, here, man, you want some of this chicken? You want some of this? You know, so I remember there were many nights many nights that food was in there smelling good he never offered me nothing and that's cool you know i had to wait you know to get my money together or whatever my family was mad at me at the time so they wasn't really fooling with me on the money tip sending me money or whatever because you need money when you're in prison unless you got a lot of money out here um people's gonna have to send you the money and you know the detectives at the time they had found my money my stash or whatever then by the time i paid for lawyers and and just being in a county jail and you know for a year or whatever before i actually got to this point my money had pretty much ran out so i'm waiting on my money to arrive so you know i'm just sitting in there just kind of you know looking silly or whatever but even with that being said yeah i delivered a message to you wouldn't you know so I get a pen and pack. I want to write it down, make sure I deliver the right message. He's like, uh, well, once you call, you know, such and such uh, for me, 
tell her when she comes down there this weekend, I need her to meet my people before she comes. Meet my people. I'm like, okay, meet your people. I'm writing it down. And tell her to make sure that she brings some uh, some quarters because you have to remind people sometimes to bring quarters. They won't let you, if you come into visitation and they find uh, that you have real money on you, like actual, uh, you know, dollar bills, $5, $10 or whatever, paper money, visit terminated immediately as contraband and they will not be uh, permitted back to visitation for, you know, at the warden's discretion. Could be 90 days, could be six months, could be longer. So remind her to bring the quarters. Okay, no problem. Oh, yeah, and tell them, uh, make sure she gets some uh, condoms. Oh, ho, 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 what? Some condoms, what the fuck? Hold on, bro. Okay, hold on. Maybe I heard some, you know, make sure that she calls your people. Make sure that she brings the quarters. But what was... Yeah, man, man, tell her bring some condoms. I said, bro, you want me to tell my girl to make sure that she relays a message. We're in prison. We're in prison. To make sure that she relays a message to your people to bring some condoms on visitation? I said, no, nah, I can't do that, dog. First of all, you know, I'm some dumb, but I'm not plumb dumb. You think I'm going to just say this over the phone where they monitor everything that you say on a prison phone? Everything is being recorded. So guess what? When I'm telling my girl, hey, yeah, um, make sure she brings some condoms. Guess who they going to come back and look at? Me. That's who, man. Me. So no, I'm not. And secondly, actually, it should have been the first thing. I'm not getting ready to relay that message if they weren't recording, bring you some condoms. I'm like, bro, where you on, man? He trying to get back down to Eddyville, where Fleece Johnson did the majority of his 40 years at, because it was a maximum security prison. The only maximum security prison uh, in the state of Kentucky at the time, he had a boyfriend at Eddyville. So he broke it down to me, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, I kind of been in a relationship. I mean, he's talking to me like he's like this is normal or something. Yeah, man, you know. Then he gets to showing me pictures. Like, look at him. He's so crazy. He's so crazy. I can't wait to get. So he's he's plotting to get back down to Eddyville Prison, State Prison, to be with uh, his lover. He already has a plan together to where he's gonna start a fight with somebody, and. He knows that if he fights somebody, he might sit in the hole for a few days, but then ultimately they're going to ship him back. It's going to, uh, his custody level will go back up. And so instead of being at a medium security, they'll send him back to max and he'll be able to be, you know, with his boyfriend. Hey, listen, once again, I don't knock anybody for whatever, you know, to each his own, but I'm not going to be a part of any of this. Because you want me to deliver a message to my girl so that she can deliver a message to your people. That's a little sketchy, to be honest. But to tell my girl to bring you some condoms in prison? Absolutely not. Can't do it, won't do it. I think he got a little salty about that. So, you know, I always slept with my eye, one eye open anyway. I don't think he really liked that too much. This was what it was. I can't say that, bro. I can't say that over the phone. I'm, I'm, I can't say, I, I can't do it. So needless to say, the point that I'm making is you never know what a person is doing in prison because at this particular time, he had been locked up maybe 11, 12 years. He's full-fledged, just, you know, 
Shit, this is my boo right here. You know, they had some domestic issues. They got into it, and he was like, man, he cut me. Um, I think it was like a, a top off of like a chili can or something like that, Jack Mac or whatever. He cut him, and, and he was like, yeah, I was bleeding everywhere, man. He's, he's crazy, man. I slapped him up a couple times, man, and, and then we, and I'm like, now why are you, like, I didn't even ask for this TMI, man. I didn't even ask for this information. Everybody needs somebody to talk to, but this is going a little overboard. These things definitely happen in prison. And so when when women start to inform themselves and hear about these things, it's not necessarily that she thinks that she was in there doing the most. Urban Dictionary doing the most is, is you know, going over the top, uh, uh, extraordinary, uh, just, just doing too much. Urban Dictionary doing the most. It's not that she thinks that she was doing the most. It's just that she values herself. She values her body her health, so she just wants to make sure so that she never has any doubts in her mind to where I wonder what he was in there doing. Now, just because you pass the, the, the test and you come up negative doesn't mean that you necessarily wasn't doing anything, but I'm here to tell you, as a guy that's done over 10 years in the Department of Corrections, I wouldn't say nearly most people, I wouldn't even say, you know, I can't really put a number on it or percentage, but because again, you don't know. If I had to guess, I would say from what I've seen, I don't know, 10%, 15, maybe 20, because it, it you know, it's kind of different. You know, when you're at a camp, a low level security, and it's nothing but six, 700 people there, the likelihood of you know, you still see some people, but when you're behind that fence, when you're behind that wall, that's where it really, really, you know, the Kool-Aid on the lips and the the walking around with the little tight shorts on and the, you know, having your hair, you look like a woman. Like, that's where it really, really goes, that relationships where they're moving and sell together, they eating together. You better not even look up at another dude. But the dude that's, that's telling you, you better not look up this dude's a gorilla. 6'2". Two. 220. Straight chisel. He throwing up 400 plus in the way pile. He's inclining 400. 225 behind the neck. Military press. He's a gorilla. Squatting 500. Deadlifting 500. But he got a boot. <laughs> it's, it's wild, man. You see some wild stuff in prison. Man. That's why I implore uh, really everybody, don't go to prison. Who wants to see that foolery, that foolishness? That's foolishness. So what? No, I've never walked in on anything like that, and I'm glad that I haven't. But I tell you what. I've seen people designate uh, uh, the shower. And when I say designate showers, it's four four feet. I was going to go through my Fleece Johnson's four foots. And I say that jokingly. The man is very, very, very intelligent. Very intelligent. But you see four feet in the shower. Close together. But there's certain places where they have a curtain up. Some places don't have a curtain, but there are certain places to where you have like a, you know, something covering the showers. I got the shower this time. 9.15 to 9.30, or 9.15 to 9.40, I got the shower. Or 9.15 to 9.30, then you have the other individual that says, okay, from 9.30 to 9.45, I have the shower. So it's a 30 minute block when you really, really break it down and they in the shower together so no you don't physically see it it's not like you in there watching it's not the, but i mean yeah, you might have to go and use the restroom and you don't even know that it's going down and you see what i'm saying like it, it's just prison has its own set of rules 
but it don't mean that you have to abide by all of the rules. It don't mean that you have to indulge. You have to, um, let me take it back. Let me take that back. Let me rewind. <laughs> Prison has its own set of rules. And a lot of it is about respect. And you must uh, uh, be respectful, if you will, about a lot of these rules. But that don't mean that you have to indulge in the extracurricular. You don't have to do that. That's by choice. They ain't, you know, they're not running up on you just taking it no more. Maybe in some places, maybe. But a lot of it is just you get down because you that's just what you want to do. This is what it is, man. You get down because you want to do, you know. If you owe somebody some money and, hey, man, I ain't got all. You got something. And you have certain people that say that once again. Not everybody, but shit, you got something. You gonna pay with all you got something you can pay with. Man, come on, man. I ain't with that, man. I told you my people gonna send my money. You've been telling me that for three weeks, bro. So you gonna get it in, or it's gonna be this. Next thing you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't got to say no more. Stay out of prison. Stay out of prison. Shit ain't no joke, man. For you all that uh, are interested in like prison stories and, and, and things that come along with prison, Google Big Sandy Federal Penitentiary. It's in Kentucky. It was one of the deadliest prisons. And it was over the span of a couple years. Somebody was literally getting killed every day. Big Sandy. Federal prison in Kentucky. You got gangs in prison. You got all type of just cliques. Aryan Nation. Skinheads, Crips, Bloods, Vice Lords, GDs. And if you go into prison and you don't know anybody or you're not connected to the street, nobody knows who you are, you don't have any... Ain't no such thing as... There's no such thing as, oh man, I'm gonna just ride by myself. No. No. And especially if you have some money. You ain't even got to be rich, but if people see you going to that commissary on a regular basis and you walking back, cause they give you a net bag, and you walking back to your to your dorm and it's full, people's peeping you out and they, and they watching. What are you going to do, man? Hey, bro, you going to break us off? Sometimes they'll take your whole bag, but ain't no sense of taking the whole bag. It's just like, look, man. Every week, man, we need $50. Man, I ain't giving y'all shit. I ain't get, I ain't, I ain't, hell no. <laughs> My man. Next thing you know, you and your brain stomped out. Unless you Chuck Norris or, 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 you know, Jet Li or somebody like that, and you know some stuff that the rest of the world, John Jones or somebody, and even them type of guys would have problems because guys got knives in prison. They got swords. They would stab you up. Mike Tyson, it don't even matter, man. When he was a man, they will stab you up. You can be the toughest guy in the world, but five guys come at you with with, with knives. Big ass, long, sharp knife. What are you going to do? You can talk all that you want. You know, oh, uh, well, man, they just going to have to kill me. It's, hey, Jake. <laughs> Takes a real man to kill Jake. Ain't like stepping on ants. I'm going to get that gun. And you're going to give me that money. Once again, I I just bloop out sometimes and go through my training day. I used to want to be a I used to want to be an actor when I was younger. So I, you know, in the middle of, you know, I, I go through that sometimes. You all will have to uh, forgive me and uh, bear with me. But it's a dangerous environment. And if you don't know anybody, you're not connected or you're not in. And even when someone does 
you know, okay, man, come on, you ride with us. They're going to want you to do something to prove yourself here, hold these knives, hold these drugs. And you like, man, I ain't got, you know, I got eight, nine years. I can make it home. But if I get caught with this, I may not ever go home or, you know, it's going to extend more to now. I can't do it. Okay. Well, since you're not going to do it, you're on your own. So now they're going to call the, the, the shot call of, let's just say, the area and A, yo, because they do communicate and talk to each other. They don't just hate each other. It's about business. It's about some business. Hey, this dude right here, he gets X amount of dollars in a week. Feel free to, to do what you want to do. He's not with us. So now they're going to extort you. Or they're going to, you see what I'm saying? Like prison, man, it's a, it's a dirty game. It's a dirty, dirty game. So it's just best to just do the right thing when you're out. I know life gets hard. I know times get hard. It gets hard for me even now. And I've been out of prison for several years, but guess what? I make it work. I don't want to go back to prison. I'm not going back to prison. So it's just what it is, man. Do the right thing. Stay out with your family, your kids, your loved ones. And, you know, those Fleece Johnson stories, allow them to be deterrents. Allow them to just be stories. Because... If you go to prison for the right crime and you're in the, the right uh, uh, situation, environment, or, you know, prison or what have you, you'll start to realize that those stories are very, very realistic. Real Kids TV. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video. Uh, feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the ch 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 channel. And definitely hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, you'll be one of the first or amongst the first, if you will, to receive it. You know, my channel is growing. I appreciate all of you all that, you know, uh, just support me. A little bit over 2,000 subscribers and we just going to keep growing. We're going to just keep growing and growing and, and see what this thing really, really takes us at. But I can't grow unless you all hit that post notification and know that I'm dropping a real, you know, I'm dropping a video, rather. Real Kids TV, man. Salute.